like a mall. It's called the Golden Acre. And that mall, and I sleep in front of the doors. It's like down escalated. It's horrible, it's extremely horrible. Half the night I have to lay like with my one eye open <laughs> because I have to like be sure about who's coming, you know, helping, you know, again, you know, and being harassed and stuff by the guys here yeah, at night. It's terrible in the daytime walking around like this. And sometimes I get so tired, I just want to like go sleep or take a nap, like being pregnant, you just want to sleep. And I can't even sleep. I don't know where. So sometimes when I sit on the side of the pavement, and I just like put my head down and close my eyes for a while. Sometimes I just wish I was dead, you know? It's horrible, seriously. And when you ask people for money, they are so rude. Um, they will like shunt you or give you the hand. <laughs> it's horrible. I can't give a baby a life on the street. I can't. How am I gonna do it, you know? Go to look for a job with a baby. People's not gonna give me work. If you go to a clinic here, you put it in that. The nurses, they will be like, you know, they'll scale you out and sweet you. And um, I don't know how to. They rude, the nurses. Um, they'll ask you, say, if, if you want to go to a clinic and you want to go on to the contraceptive, contraception, the nurses will ask you why you're so young, what are you having sex for now, this age, and that's what I'm scared of. I wouldn't even do it on my own. Like maybe like tying a rope around my stomach or something. I, I know this sounds harsh. But, um, yeah, it's my only way out. The thing with, with, with clients is that they are very vulnerable, they want to keep it a secret, they don't want other people to know, and therefore they are not big on standing up for their rights. I think a lot of black nurses, equally so white nurses, have problems with abortion because it's, it's the same old religious moral issues about killing a baby, etc. And very few people are catered within the reality of that. Uh, you know, for many women in this country, uh, consensual sex isn't even an issue. The inability to negotiate same sex, high levels of rape, incest, sexual violence in this country. I mean, people don't even begin, you know, I mean, those are the issues that people don't really look at. and. Uh, the abortion related morbidity and mortality that resulted you know as a result of unsafe abortion so you know forget all the people always see it from a moral kind of perspective you know pro-life people are very strong in universities and uh, uh, those uh, doctors for life usually came in in touch with pro-life people in their first year at university already so they've been fairly well indoctrinated as well the kind of right-wing Christian continuum that everyone is so familiar with. I mean, they would be anti-communism, they would support um, the death penalty, they would be opposed to abortion, anti-pornography, anti-sex worker. You know, it's just one, you know, you know exactly what's going on in their head. But at the same time, what was very, very critical at that time is that they were also supporting um, what could almost be argued as terrorist organizations that were undermining the liberation struggles in Mozambique and, and Angola. Um, so that was quite important to acknowledge. Um, it was called, there was a group called Frontline Fellowship, you know, that was handing out a Bible and a gun. We also have a political party that's very anti-abortion, for instance. Uh, the African Christian Democrats. Um, uh, so, um, there's various factions, but they have no problem working together to obtain a goal.
you know, in terms of enshrining it within the constitution, enshrining it within, you know, uh, the legal framework, it would be seen as as a Western thing. But I'm sure that people have been doing abortions all along. You know, they've, they've, I know that it has been happening, only that it's not been uh, spoken about very loudly. But it has been happening within African society. So one cannot say that uh, it's an import from the West. You know. Women have been making choices, and they have been making those choices silently. Many men seldom find out much about abortion. If they do, they discover after the abortion has taken place. And therefore, it's usually considered to be, some men actually consider it to be a man, women's affair. Private. One of the easiest ways in uh, to, to, to get people talking about the issue of abortion would be to choose the easiest route, which would be to, to talk about the, the, the health issues related to women. That would be the easiest way to get communities uh, to even begin to talk about uh, abortion as a choice. between our service, as an NGO service, free of charge also, to uh, an abortion service of the state, is um, in the way we work with the client. I would say our service is much more friendly, um, less judgmental. Um, the, the quality of the service is very high. People would make an appointment here um, they don't sit um, at a clinic for a whole day and then not get service um, or sit at a designated area within a clinic where everybody knows why you're there um, and it is linked to quality intensive counselling so and I think very often at facilities where there are a lack of staff um, the, the counselling doesn't get attention and here we, we open options for the client, we talk about why she's here, why has this happened, you know, um, how can we make sure that this doesn't happen in future, what are the other options and are she, is she sure that she wants to do this. And when she is fine and comfortable with that decision that only she makes, then we would book her for the procedure. And um, yeah, we try to bring in the, um, the partner also where we can. We like the partner to come with on the day of the procedure, you know, and then after the procedure we have a short post counselling session again, just to make sure that this client is fine, and then just to say to her, you know, whenever else she wants to talk about this, she is welcome to come to Mosaic. We have had the impact of, of the Bush regime, in a sense, on South Africa, where funding has been shifted from donors, instead of coming around women's rights and, and um, to, to Iraq. Also, funders have had key constraints, where if you work on abortion or if you work on homosexuality, you basically don't get given funding anymore. I mean, the, 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 the traditional groups of the United Nations Population Fund just dried up in this area. It's also difficult because I know that the, the Planned Parenthood here, they were, they, they, the Americans reduced their funding a lot because they were talking about abortion, they were referring to it. So that already had an impact on us. It's quite clear that in South Africa at this time we've got a very worrying understanding. Uh, in 2007, it's, it's not a happy marriage, women's rights and human rights. It's, it's not a very clear link 